The twin paradox is a thought experiment of the twins, one of whom is an astronaut and the other stays at home. The astronaut brother undertakes a long space journey, moving at almost the speed of light, while the other remains on Earth. When the travelling brother finally returns to Earth, it is discovered that he is younger than his sibling. To understand the twin paradox, we have to first understand how time is being created and the part we play in its creation. In quantum atom theory, the arrow of time is formed by the forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation from each individual atom. Just like ripples on a pond, each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Each expanding wavefront will create a probability of a future event. When a wavefront comes in contact with another atom, a photon or quantum of energy will be absorbed. This will create a new moment in time that will be part of Einstein's curvature of space-time. There will then be a quantum leap of energy, creating a new wave function of future probability. In this way, two-dimensional space on the surface of an atom expands into three-dimensional space-time, forming its own space-time geometry and symmetry. The geometry of space-time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes. Each photon-electron coupling will create its own symmetry around its point in space-time. Each twin will create the symmetry of its own geometry and their own space-time, relative to their position and momentum. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, using the terminology of quantum mechanics, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. We therefore live in a universe of multiple space-times, and each space-time is governed by the Wren's contraction of time. As the twin accelerates towards the speed of light, it will distort the geometry of its own space-time, and time will run slower relative to a twin that stayed at home and is not accelerating. This is because an increase in energy or mass will increase the number of photon-electron couplings and there is a delay factor for each photon-electron coupling. This is why light travels slower through glass, water and a gravitational field. The accelerating twin will distort the geometry of its own space-time from the smallest atom to the entire electromagnetic spectrum will have to contract for the laws of physics to remain the same. When this happens, time will slow down because the forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation is continuously forming the future probability of the time continuum. We know time is a variable because we have time dilation. In quantum atom theory, the variable of time is the hidden variable that can explain the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. The time dilation that we have in the twin paradox will be visible at the quantum level of the atoms as the measurement pro problem of quantum physics. The more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure where it is. This is because momentum is frame dependent and light has momentum. Therefore, each photon-electron coupling will be at the center of its own reference frame. The greater the momentum, the shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy, or mass, and time will slow down. Therefore, the shorter the time period, the greater the energy. This sounds very odd, but as the frequency gets higher, the wavelength gets shorter, and also the time period gets shorter, relative to an observer in their own reference frame. Each photon-electron coupling will have an energy level of the Planck constants times the frequency of the light. The uncertainty principle is always larger than the Planck constant because the Planck constant is, small, is the smallest unit of measurable time and it is time dilation that creates the uncertainty principle. Because time dilation, the energy of the oscillations at high frequency falls to zero as the frequency of the radiation gets bigger. Time is only relative to the wavelength of the object creating the space-time. 
This can be seen because light of different colours have different wavelengths. Blue light has short, shorter wavelengths than red light, and therefore blue light is refracted more than red. The different colours will have different positions in space and time, therefore forming rainbows of colour. A rainbow is only relative to each individual observer, because each observer is creating their own space-time geometry. If we have two observers at different positions, they will both see the same rainbow in different positions of the sky at the same time. The best way to see this for yourself is to observe a rainbow from a moving car or train. The rainbow will also move relative to your position and momentum. You might think this is happening just because all the angles are changing and you will be right. But the important thing is that the different colours are moving relative to each other and are not relative to anything else. This is because the colours represent the different wavelengths of the light itself and the momentum of time is only relative to the wavelength of the object creating the space-time. Therefore we see a beauty of a broken symmetry. I have often wondered why oil paintings of one colour look more dramatic. It could be because colours represent the position of space and time that the artists find more difficult to represent. To put it very simply, time moves at the speed of light, and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. The greater the mass, or energy, the slower time will run. Because time is expanding at the same rate that light moves, light itself is a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. I believe there is a law of the conservation of time, just as, a, as there is a law of the conservation of energy. Because of this law, time slows for one at the same rate that it speeds up for the other. Time will speed up for the twin left at home, because he is in the same space-time, or reference frame, created by the momentum of the rocket. For the astronaut twin sat in the cockpit of the rocket, there is no change of momentum, because, because he has a reference frame, or space-time, attached to the object's centre of mass. Because this mass is increasing as he accelerates towards the speed of light, his time is slowing down. This theory might be wrong, I have found little evidence of the law of the conservation of time, but light has momentum, and momentum is governed by the law of the conservation of energy and for this to work there must also be a law of the conservation of time. In this theory the parallel universe, universes of U Everett are here placed at right angles to each other, just as he said they would be. The only difference is they are individual space-times within our own universe. The existence of other space-times makes it possible to remove the randomness and action at a distance from quantum theory and thus from all physics 